Hi, everybody. Welcome to Will Eisner Week, a annual celebration of Will Eisner and the graphic novel and uh, free speech and the things that Will so uh, passionately believed in. And we've been talking to different people about uh, uh, Will. And today I'm very pleased uh, to have uh, Jerry Craft. And Jerry Craft is the New York Times bestselling and Newbery Medal winning author. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, of the graphic novel, New Kid. His second graphic novel, Class Act, uh, publishes on October 6th, 2020. Did it really come out then? Uh, yes, last year. Yeah, so in the midst of the COVID. Um, yeah. Kraft is also the creator of Mama's Boys, an award-winning comic strip, which won the, American, the African-American Literary Award five times. He's a co-founder of the Schomburg Center's annual Black Comic Book Festival, and he received his BFA from the School of Visual Arts. Welcome, Jerry Graff. Thank you so much. Thank you very uh, much. Oh, great to have you here. So um, uh, I guess talk a little bit. When did you first become aware of Will Eisner, uh, both as a person and as a, a legend? You know what's so funny is so much, uh, so many of the icons that I met in my life, I met uh, before I realized who they were, you know. And so I, you know, I was always a Marvel comic guy. Wow. You know, so I grew up loving like John Buscema and Gene Colan and Gil Kane and like those kind of guys, you know. Right. And um, so I had never really seen any comics that weren't superhero comics, you know. So when I went to the School of Visual Arts, um, I, went, yeah, I went with the goal of being the next great artist of Spider-Man or Silver Surfer or something like that. And so I saw they had a cartooning program. I was like, oh, you know, let me go. And they had some guy named Will Eisner and some guy named Harvey Kurtzman. But <laughs> again, because I was just a Marvel guy, unfortunately, I didn't know, you know, that they were legends. And um, so, you know, I guess I show up at noon to like sign up for these classes. And I guess the comic aficionados who knew them had like spent the night, you know, like uh, the new Xbox is coming out. So they... <laughs> those classes just filled up immediately. So in my four years of uh, attending School of Visual Arts, I never took a single cartooning class with Will Eisner or Harvey Kurtzman. I did take one coloring class with Sal Amendola, but that was the only one I was ever able to get into. That's funny. So, uh, and, and, and did you meet, and when did you actually end up meeting Will? So it was like, I don't even remember what year, like maybe 2000. And there was a graphic novel conference at Amherst University. Uh -huh. And uh, by then I knew who he was. And I went over and introduced myself. And it seemed like we talked for about half an hour. Like, it was amazing. And yeah. it was like, wow, this is what I missed out on <laughs> my, four, my four years at SVA. You know, because I actually went to SVA and ended up becoming an advertising copywriter. Uh -huh. um, you know, and I, I think probably if I had had him, that I would have really gone into cartooning much early on in life. Right. Well, that's, you know, Will was very generous talking to people, <clears throat> you know, I mean, the few, uh, I mean, I, <clears throat> I didn't know him well, but anytime I spoke with him and the time I did an interview, he was very generous uh, with his time uh, and kind of not judgmental about what, what you'd achieved or not achieved or what he came in knowing about you. Um, so uh, I know we've talked about a few things you, that we wanted to cover. So uh, Will's impact um, on comics, on you, um, talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so um, his impact came much later in life because, you know, I was reading Marvel Team Up. And then when I first started saying, you know, people say, hey, you know, you really should check him out. Um, you know, there's a lot of things. One, um, you know, I, I found my copy of To the Heart of the Storm and just reading through this and there's so much that is, you know, the same story that is going on today, just names are changed and times are changed. You know, I'm reading this today and, you know, his dad is talking to him and says, you know, um, it's how they lived in the old country. They were peasants and they needed someone they could beat up on. It made them feel superior. 
And just the, the whole idea of people beating up on other people to feel superior, it's just a story that unfortunately will, I, I hope it goes away one day, yeah. but it's as if he released it last year or this year or a week ago. Well, I, uh, I'm sorry. No, 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 go ahead. I was gonna say, you know, pre in preparing for this uh, interview, I read New Kid in Class Act and, and I actually, that's what I thought of was Heart of the Storm. I said, even though in many ways it's totally different in some ways, oh, this is, you know, to the heart of the storm for a slightly younger audience. Yeah. And, 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 but, but yeah, that, that was the Eisner book that I thought of as I was reading both, both of your yeah. books. Yeah. And, and it's, it's such a, you know, I wish that we could um, embrace these stories more because it makes people more empathetic, you know, yeah. and, um, even more so than, you know, the, the superhero books and, you know, of when you're seeing these real kids and real dads and, you know, you're seeing bullies come up and, and what, what that does to people, um, it really tugs at the heartstrings, you know? So there's this whole emotional uh, commitment that you have to his characters that is just like really pulls you in. Yeah, well, Will, uh, I mean, Unlike you and me, Will was not a big fan of superheroes. I'm sure he was expert in them, you know, and, and did some. You know, he was a an artist. You know, he, he had a, a shop uh, in in the in the forties that that did uh, you know the package stuff for other people before he did the spirit and even while he was doing the spirit. Um, so yeah, so talk a little bit more about that. Sort of, I, I know a lot of people that think of comics. Oh, they're superheroes, and I guess it sounds like like that was your worldview till. So uh, what, what, did, what did open your, open your eyes to the possibilities of comics beyond superheroes? Was it, that... it was definitely him. Yeah. It was definitely Will Eisner. Um, you know, going back and reading it and then looking also artistically because, you know, black and white, which, you know, when I was a kid, that was like watching the black and white TV set. Like nobody wanted to watch black and white, <laughs> you know, but getting an eye for it, um, you know, being older and looking at it and really looking at it. And it's, it's almost like looking now and appreciating, uh, you know, the Rod Serling Twilight Zones right. in the black and white and how they use the shadows and just the tone. It just pulls you in so much. And everything that he did, uh, was artistic to the 10th degree, you know? It's like, obviously the art, but the panels, the word balloons, the, the lettering, like you just look so much. And there's so few people that, to me, once I really started appreciating the non-superhero art, you know, where you see the masters, like some of my favorites were Bud Blake, who did the comics to Tiger, uh, Jim Borgman and Walt Kelly doing Pogo, where, you know, you almost look at these uh, through a, a magnifying glass just to see so much detail. It's, it's insane the amount of detail. It, like, makes my head hurt thinking, like, wow, for me to do that, you know, it would take, like, I'd still be working on the first new kid if I tried to put in that much detail. <laughs> When, when did you discover Blake and Borgman and Kelly and, and, and how do you relate them to, to Eisner? Just the black and white aesthetic? No, just the, the, the way that the lines move. Like, so one of my first jobs uh, was at King Features Syndicate. And that was when I got to meet Bud Blake and I saw his art and really started looking at the, the difference and how he used the blacks and, you know, spotted them and just how the panels move as opposed to just you know like a Kathy or a Dilbert or you know and that's not knocking them I'm just saying it's a very different approach you know and um you know the brush strokes and and I remember going to visit Bud Blake and seeing you know him with like the gelat points and the you know and it was like holy moly um so I really became kind of a fan of that and then you know also artistically, like, uh, I'm also a, a big Norman Rockwell fan. And because if someone is tired, they're not just like this. 
they're like every muscle in their body is relaxed in their hand. And, and that's the same kind of thing where you look just everything is just, just pushed. Um, and it's one of those things where I would do some work and I'd be proud of my book and I'd go and read one of his and just oh, let's start from scratch, you know, just, you know, put it aside and like, okay, let's push it up a little bit. Let's, let's put some more work into this until there was something I was happy, but you know, the black and the borders and just, you know, yeah. Yeah. You know, so I, it's funny. I just was thinking, uh, you know, one of the sort of classic things about Eisner's life and hence his graphic novels that actually reminds me of your, of your graphic novels too, is that his father was a kind of an artist and a dreamer and had his head in the clouds and his mother was very practical and, and kind of worried about, you know, who, how the rent was going to get paid. Mm -hmm. and, and I just realized it kind of echoes. Oh, wow. Your portrayal of your parents in, uh, <laughs> in Oh, your wow. Book. That's cool. Yeah, you know, it's so funny to oh, his parents. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, yes, <laughs> but, but no, it's so funny um, to grow to the point of you know doing the graphic novels, you know, after meeting the man who like coined the phrase, and actually having the same agent now as Will Eisen, Judy Hans is my agent, and it's like, wow, it's like just. You know, I feel like the torch being passed a little bit and it's like, you know, just to even be in that same world, you know, is just amazing. Um, but, you know, it was also helpful because uh, when I would read his stuff and look at it, then I would go and just want to go crazy, right? It's almost like, you know, when, when back in the day, getting your first... Uh, Mac, you know, uh, your first Apple computer, and you've got like 40 different fonts on there. So everything you do, you use like all 40 fonts, and then you just can't read it because it's insane. Um, so I realized that I started pushing my work to it almost you couldn't see it because it was insane and putting so much stuff. And then reading his comics and sequential art blog, ah. um, there was one panel in particular, page 98, that I I still have, you know, like the little bookmark and it shows this guy and, you know, he comes home and he's getting dressed and he just, you know, he puts on the coat and then just flies out the window and he's showing the different ways to do it and showing how, uh, you know, like at that point I was trying to do everything angular, you know, like this and then the super close up and this, and just really pushing it to be crazy. Um, and then he just said, look, you know, here's a guy, here he's walking, here's walking. And now, because you're kind of almost bored by what you see, when you see him fly out the window at the end, you're completely shocked by it, as opposed to, you know, this kind of the Jack Kirby style coming in, and then you're not surprised by the ending. So then I had to go, and rework what I, and kind of bring back from my craziness. And then I think I was able to take a breath and go, okay, not every panel has to be insane. And then I think that just really helped me up here uh -huh. to the point where I'm, I'm happy now with what I'm able to do. But he definitely played a huge impact artistically and story-wise. And, um... So I guess just sort of wrapping up, I mean, is there anything, you know, the question I always ask at, at the end of these things is, what do you think Will Eisner's legacy is? Um, so I guess that, or any other last thoughts on Will that you'd like to share? Yeah, you know, I think that, you know, for a young artist like me to read his stuff and really empathize with what it was like being, you know, Jewish in his neighborhood with his mom and dad, and I guess, like you said, subconsciously echo a lot of that, where now, you know, in 20 years, you know, someone may be talking about New Kid. And it's like, yeah, you know, when I read about this African-American family, and even though I'm not African-American, I really, like, bonded with the character so well that I decided I wanted to do that with, you know, who I am. Um, and that's the legacy of kind of paying it forward and laying down the groundwork 
for empathy and conversations and, you know, and entertainment because they're definitely entertaining as well. Great. Jerry, thank you. This was just really wonderful. Thank you so much for taking the time. Congratulations on thank the you. award and, 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 all, and all the great work. And uh, you stay well and everybody else stay well and uh, take care. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. By the way, I'm sure you knew this, but Stan Lee was from uh, Washington Heights, too. Oh, you know what? So funny is I was d doing the Google search just to show my sons one day. And it was like famous people from Washington Heights. It was like, you know, Stan Lee, Henry Kissinger, A-Rod, you know, Lin-Manuel Miranda. And it had my name on it. And I was like, wow, <laughs> me, Stan Lee and Henry Kissinger. Woo! I, I think I think the most famous resident up here now is Dr. Ruth. Oh, 